All right, so for this problem, we have a triangle. And thank you. on this triangle, we have A equals 11, B equals 14, and C equals 20. Um, one thing we want to work on, we look at this, since we have all three side lengths, we cannot, Sam, use the law of sines, right? We're not going to be able to create that ratio. Um, so we're going to have to use the law of cosines. And remember, there's three different formats for the law of cosines. Either, you know, we can solve for the cosine of A, we have the cosine of B, or we have the cosine of C. So when using the law of cosines, one thing that's going to be a helpful hint or a helpful way to work for it is to solve for your largest um, or your angle that's directly across from your largest angle or your side length. So here we have our largest side length is 20, so let's find the cosine of our angle C. So right now I know C is equal to 20. Let's figure out what the cosine of C is. So, um, you know, we know the whole form. We can write out just the cosine of C right over here. All right, all right. Cosine of C, all right, is going to equal A squared plus B squared minus C squared all over 2 times A times B. All right. And now simply all we need to do is just plug in what is it we what is we exactly know. So we already know our a, b, and our c as our a is 11 and b equals 14. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to plug it into our equation and simplify. So we'll have 11 squared plus 14 squared minus 20 squared divided by 2 times 11 times uh, B, which is 14. All right, and when we got this, what did we get? Anybody get the answer? Oh, what? Cosine C? Uh, negative 83 over 308. Negative 0.83? Oh, no. no. It's negative 83 over 308. Okay, so what's that decimal? Did you get that? Negative 0.27. So you got a negative point two sorry, right. negative eighty three divided by three oh eight. Three oh eight. That equals hundred. Okay, so then we take the inverse cosine of that. The inverse cosine. And we get hundred and five point six three. Sam, is that what you got? Yeah, point six. Why did you want to go like the freaking? You told me to go. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hug it out, hug it out. Whoa. <laughs> whoa, there. Why is it? I don't know. Look, Rob, you're. One hundred sixty-five point sixty-three is our sine of C. Okay. I'm excited to learn math. So, I'm just saying. So now we have one hundred. 5.63 degrees, all right? And now we need just to determine what is our other angle or is it B? Matt, Matt. Yes, Matt. Um, I have a problem. When I plug in a negative number, the inverse of cosine, it ends up being negative 0. 0.27. Yeah. 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 Ye
Um, and then take the inverse sine of that. And 31.98? Nope. Yeah. So I can now say A is going to be 39, or 31. 0.98. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we could do the law of sines again if we want to. We could use the law of cosines again if we want to, but we don't have to. All we need to understand is that this angle plus this angle minus 180 is going to add up to our B, our missing angle B. Did someone get that? Yeah. So I just report. Um, well, so it should be 180 minus 31.98 minus 105.63 equals. Point three three eight. Um, and there you go. What if I got some things you could do? They're just Do they like, all add up to 180? Yeah, they're just a couple numbers off. So well, it's just when you're rounding. That's just the way I talked about what I want you guys to round with for your numbers. Okay? So we're just going to try to be as consistent as we rounding. Anybody have any questions on at least the process? The main important thing, ladies and gentlemen, is to use your law of cosines. Figure out your largest angle first. Once you have the law of cosines, then use the law of sines to figure out your other angle, and then use um, you know, the fact that all angles add up to 180 to figure out your last sign. All right?